JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 9th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, the majority of the other region 10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It gained the most uh, versus NOC, GBP, CAT, Kiwi and the Aussie in that order, while it underperformed slightly only against uh, the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Swiss franc. Now the strengthening of the safe havens, uh, US dollar, yen and Swiss franc combined with the weakening of the risk and oil uh, linked currencies suggests that markets traded in a risk of fashion yesterday. Indeed, major EU and US indices were a sea of uh, red with the negative sentiment rolling into the Asian session today. The index that lost the least was uh, the UK FTSE 100, but this may have been due to further weakness in the pound after the UK told the EU that uh, it is ramping up preparations to leave the bloc without any accord. The Nasdaq was the biggest uh, loser, plunging 4.11% as investors picked up from where they stopped last week, keep selling tech-related uh, stocks. Tesla tumbled 18.3%, its worst day in, uh, in uh, nearly six uh, months, after the company was excluded from a group of firms added to the S&P 500. Now, as for our view, it has not changed uh, much. There is no apparent trigger for the tech uh, sell-off ignited last week, and thus we are reluctant to call for a trend reversal in major uh, equity indices. We just believe that the correction may continue for a while longer than we initially thought, and that's because uh, several major indices like the Dow, the S&P and Nasdaq fell below important upside support lines. With the Fed and other, uh, and other major uh, central banks staying willing uh, to do whatever it takes to support the global economy, we see decent chances for equities to rebound again at some point in the not too distant future. Oil prices also continue to collapse, with Brent falling below $14 a barrel for the first time since June. That's why Nock and Cat were among the main losers in, uh, in the G10 sphere. Let's not forget that both uh, the Canadian and Norwegian economies are heavily dependent on oil exports. The reason behind the tumble in oil prices may have been the rise in the rising COVID cases in several countries, including India, Great Britain, Spain, and several states of the US. At this point, it is worth mentioning that uh, the infection rate of in uh, the infection uh, rate of increase seems to have not come under control with uh, the number of new daily cases hitting a fresh record on Friday. This is weighing on demand for fuels and thereby on hopes for a global economic recovery. That said, as we already noted, we don't expect any major crash in energy and stock, we don't expect any major, uh, another major crash in energy and stock prices. This may just be a warning for major central banks and governments to introduce more stimulus. As uh, for today, the main event on the calendar is uh, the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. At its last meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates unchanged at 0.25% and noted that they will stay there until the 2% inflation target is sustainably achieved. Officials also added that they will continue their QE program until the economic recovery is well underway and that they stand ready to adjust uh, their programs if uh, market conditions uh, change. Now, since the last meeting, inflation data for July showed that the headline CPI rate tumbled to 0.1% year-over-year from 0.7% in 
and that the core rates lead to 0.7% from 1.1%. That said, the latest GDP data showed that the Canadian economy performed better than expected in June, despite sliding 38.7% on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter annualized basis, while last Friday's employment report, even though it missed estimates, it came on the decent side with the unemployment rate sliding to 10.2% from 10.9%. So with all that in mind, we don't expect uh, Bank of Canada policymakers to act at this gathering. We believe that they will stand pat and reiterate uh, their readiness to adjust their programs if market conditions change. As for the loony, it may gain somewhat if uh, the Bank of Canada refrains, refrains from taking additional easing steps, but we don't expect this to last for long. With oil prices tumbling, the Canadian currency may be poised to give back any Bank of Canada related gains and to continue trading lower, especially against the, the US dollar, which has been in a recovery mode recently due to the tech driven sell off in equities. As uh, for the rest of today's events, from Canada, apart from the Bank of Canada interest rate decision, we also get the nation's housing starts for August. The US uh, JOLTS uh, job openings for July are also due to be released. With regards to the energy market, we have the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for tonight, during the Asian Morning Thursday, New Zealand's electronic cart uh, retail sales for August and Japan's core machinery orders for, Jul for July are due to be released. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For, for those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.